y'all what's up it's friday so i'm gonna keep it black but i'm gonna keep it brief we're gonna get into a little bit of mature content this friday so watch by yourself before showing your kids i'm not sure if you all have heard about lauren smith fields as of yet but this 23 year old girl died in her apartment on december 12th after spending the night with a 37 year old white man by the name of matthew lafountain and as of this week lauren's family has still yet to get any answer and will never see closure as much as you can for a loss such as this because lauren everybody is a black girl. Ugh. 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 And at this point, it's like beating a dead horse. But y'all keep showing us your complete and utter disregard for black women's safety and livelihood. And you keep wondering what we mean when you say you hate us. So today, I'm gonna break it down. People in the back, come sit in the front. Are you talking to the whites? Nah, everybody can get it. Exhibit A. The death of Lawrence Smithfields happened a month and a half ago. But somehow, the last person who was with her, the white man, has yet to be identified as a suspect. And the Bridgeport Police Department has botched this case in a number of ways. Oh Lord, what's happening? Hi. I got a, I got a little show on Instagram. Yes, it's called Parking Lot Pimpin'. Yeah. Thank you so Girl, much. What can I do to help you? What? Well, you can watch the show on Instagram, but I also just got nominated for an NAACP award. Um, what? Mm -hmm. So if you could vote for that as well, the link is in the bio. Do you know that nobody contacted the family? That the family had to call the police the day after her body was turned in. After they themselves walked into her apartment and found evidence that she was missing and blood on the bed. Also, the police took Matthew's word for it and left it there even though there was evidence conflicting the story that he gave. He said they drank earlier in the evening and she became ill. Then they played games. Then she fell asleep and he put her in the bed and then laid next to her in the bed and fell asleep. Okay, except somehow her mom and them found lube, a condom, alcohol, and a pill on the premises. All of which local law enforcement failed to collect. But that's nothing new. Because law enforcement fails to use its resources to follow up on the cases of missing and murdered black women and girls all the time. 100,000 black women and girls went missing in 2020. We don't have the 2021 stats yet, but too often officials lollygag about the whereabouts of these girls, thinking black women to be less fragile than white women, more sexually promiscuous, deviant, or just grown women who made decisions to leave, likely associated with drugs and or risky behavior. And it's not just them. The attention black women and girls receive or do not receive in the media also greatly impacts how hard somebody's gonna look to find them. Black women suffer from domestic violence, robbery at gunpoint, kidnap, rape, and murder by intimate partners all the time. But we get brief news coverage of a violent dispute using language that suggests that the woman participated in the acts that led to her fate just once in a blue moon. Louder, please! Meanwhile, news and media outlets have exhibited missing white women syndrome for decades. Not only closely following up on the updates of these women's cases for months, but also then giving these women a platform to speak on their experiences once they've been found. And a black girl might get an obscure Lifetime movie that is still a dramatization or caricature of their life experiences. And this allows black women the opportunity to be humanized, which brings me to exhibit B. Oh, she on y'all asses today. Y'all keep putting side by side images of this shapely woman in a bikini next to this man in hiking gear. Oh, well that's their bumper profile photo. Okay, and using those photos was a choice. They could have chosen not to put a half naked photo out of Lauren in these stories out of respect for the dead. LOL, why would they do that? But then again, media has profited off the sensationalism garnered from exhibiting black women's bodies for centuries. Talk to them. Practice widely as slave auction and then put on a global stage with the hot and tight Venuses of the 19th century. Like Sarah Bartman. Many of us have seen the photos of this woman's body being put on display on freak show circuits. And it's been debated about whether or not she willfully participated in these displays because she was somebody else's property. What she for damn sure didn't consent to, which I just learned this week, was for her genitalia to be displayed in museums after her death to show the anomalies in black women's sex parts as indicators that they were less than human. Parts that are still on display at a museum in France today. Oh my God, why did we start talking about private parts? I'm glad you asked. The circulation of hot and tight Venuses body parts before and after their death, fueled arguments within scientific racism. And because scientists held the authority on presenting new findings in biological and medical information, scientific racism was taken as fact. And these facts were seemingly, seamlessly adopted by philosophers, sociologists, anthropologists, who all used the physical characteristics of black women's bodies to suggest that they had more primitive sexual appetites, that they were unrapeable, and anybody who was attracted to them was attracted out of necessity. Huh? I feel like y'all ancestors then would be upset that y'all pay to look like this. <laughs> T. I'm just saying with a profile picture like that, she knew what she was looking for. And so what if she wanted to have sex with somebody? Women's decisions to posture themselves sexually does not invite anybody to have access to her body without her consent. It's only because white women have controlled the narrative of naked black women's bodies for so long that you think our naked bodies to be offensive or not respectable. But y'all be having naked white women painted on the ceilings of palaces and churches talking about art. Please. Which is why dress code is such a problem for our black girl self-image and the world building that dress codes around black girls produces. I feel like you've talked about this before. And I'ma keep on talking about it because it starts when we are young. And I need every man, woman, administrator charged with building safe spaces for black girls to understand how important it is that they have a safe space. Stop telling them the bodies that God gave them are distractions. Stop telling them it's unprofessional. Stop telling them it's unladylike. It's old, it's tired, and it's antiquated. Don't forget to put in your vote for the NAACP Image Award.